Ashwan Dam, which is one of the world's largest embankment dams built across the Nile in Ashwan, Egypt, begins construction. Eric Peugeot, the youngest son of the founder of Peugeot Corporation, is kidnapped in Paris and was released in exchange for $300,000 ransom, which would be equivalent to $3.1 million today. The year is 1960, and this entry-level Le Sabre was on offer at Buick. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that covers cars no one else cares to cover. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics. We love the orphan cars and cars off the beaten path. Engine episodes on Wednesday, history, specs, but most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss a video. This slightly customized Buick LeSabre is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over 900 cars for sale when recording this episode. Anybody can go peruse their inventory for hours of operation as well as more information and pictures pertaining to this very car. Be sure to click the link below after the show. 1960, Buick was broken down into three trim slash model lines. Le Sabre in the basement, followed by Invicta in the center. Electra at the top, but it's worth mentioning the Electra could be had as Electra or Electra 225. 1960, Buick Le Sabre could be had as a four-door sedan, two-door sedan, four-door hardtop, two-door hardtop, two-door convertible, and four-door wagon. Buick, Le Sabre replaced the Special in 1959, entry-level Buick. With that said, Buick would bring back the Special in 1961. Buick would offer the Le Sabre from 1959 through 2005, 1959 through 1985 as rear-wheel drive, and then switching to front-wheel drive in 1986 through 2005, offered in eight generations, 1960, Falls in the first generation, which had a production run for two years, 1959 and 1960. Designed by Ned Nichols with heavy influences from Do, 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 Harley Earl. Both the 1959 and 60 were standalone designs, both absolutely stunning, drop dead gorgeous designs in my opinion. So let's compare 59 on top, 60 on the bottom, starting in the front. Both have that delta wing design aspect in the front fascia, for lack of a better term, but done completely different. The 59 has chrome everywhere, whereas the 60 has more of a conservative approach to chrome. 59 headlights mimic the delta wingness in the front fascia. They're slightly tilted, whereas the 60 is horizontal. Bumpers, turn signal placements are different. Grills are totally different concepts. The 60 is concaved, almost like a wave coming at you. 59 has a bunch of little squares. V-badge on the 59 versus 60 has a floating Buick shield badge. And I know this might sound like it's all over the place, but it's by design to make you look at the designs to take a closer look at things and how things are tied together. Also, the hoods are completely different. The 60 slopes down, whereas the 59 bulges up. 60 also has a center spear. Buick spelled out on the 60 versus 59 is spelled out as well, but it's a bit more of an ornament slash crest than letters. Mirrors are mounted in the same place, but different designs. Moving to the side profile. Pretend the car on the bottom is a two-door sedan. The first thing that jumps out at me is the 60 is like a rolling sculpture. The 59 is relatively smooth, very different side profiles. Vanny ports on the 60, the 59 doesn't have. The 59 has trim that runs from the top just above the headlight. It wraps around running from the top of the fender with a ever so slow angle going aft ending at the taillights. Whereas the 60 has the trim at the belt line that runs from the front side bumper profile to the rear side bumper profile, even the wheel wells are completely different. Tops and roof line are the same, but notice the bright work around the doors on the 60 versus 59 is body color. Moving to the rear, bumpers are completely different. The 60 is just 
ever so nicely sculpted. Look at those lines, different trunk ornamentation. 59 has more bright work. Tail lights on the 60 stand out more. Backup lights on the 60. Moving inside to take a look at the dash. The 59, in my opinion, looks absolutely incredible. The 60, it's kind of plain, but maybe that's just me. What do you guys think? Which one do you like better? For me, I like the 60 with the 59 dash. But then again, the 59 in person is a really stellar car. Moving to the specs. 217.4 inches long, 80.7 inches wide, 57.2 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 123 inches. It weighs 4,340 pounds. Price, $2,740, which is equivalent to you spending $28,480.36 in the year 2023. Total, 1960 Buick was 285,089 units, of which 164,904 were the LeSabre, and of that number, two-door sedans were 13,492. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer for the Buick LeSabre. That was the 364 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V86 liters. It's good for 250 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 380 pound-feet, or 515 newton meters at 2,400 RPM. With a bore of 4.3 inches and a stroke of 3.4 inches, compression was 10.5 to 1, featured five main bearings. It could be had with a three-speed manual or a three-speed automatic. Zero to 60 was 9.8 seconds versus 10.6 seconds with the automatic theoretical top speed 112 miles per hour while achieving an average fuel consumption rating of 11.3 with the manual or 11.1 with the automatic <laughs> Hope Buick Show, the Turbine Drive Buick 60 by General Motors, Buick LeSabre, Buick Invicta, Buick Electra, Buick at its all-time best. And now, here is the star of our show, Bob Hope. really delighted to be back with Buick again. It's a very pleasant association. They just gave me a new Buick, although I wish they'd waited till the steel strike was over. <laughs> I have automatic windows and no doors. <laughs> and I do hope you enjoy our first show. We were supposed to be in color this year, but the peacock turned chicken. <laughs> but we're back. And I want to tell you, this has been some month, hasn't it? The Russians hit the moon, the Dodgers won the pennant, and Bing had a filly. This is Buick 1960. The Turbine Drive Buick 60. And ride of it. It's smart, new, luxurious interior. All around. Buick is a lot of automobile. The Sabre Buick at its lowest price. Invicta, the high-performance Buick. Electra Buick at its finest. The Turbine Drive Buick 60 by General Motors. Let's talk styling. Just look at everything that is going on with this front-end design. Look at how far this sits back and the headlights protrude, but not just that. There's all kinds of lines going on. The more you look at this car, the more lines you see. I love the bezels. I love the fact that they're not straight. They come... See how that's kind of like a U-shape almost. And then here in the center, there's a nice point. And then you have this grill that looks like a wave coming back at you. Turn signal indicators are nice and big down here underneath. Just look at how the bumper is layered. Has this part that protrudes more outward than the bottom part. Beautiful floating Buick here in the center. 
nice Buick script here. Also the hood comes to a point here as well as ever so slight raised center line. This one has a spear that comes down and it's a different color. It's the same color as the top. But just notice the center line in the center spear itself. The hood is relatively smooth. But just look at the lines, how this is more raised. Coming around the side here, just look at all of the different lines sculpted into the body itself. And there's a better look at the side profile of the bumper. Once again, just all kinds of different lines going on. At this top design, it's got three vanity ports. The wheel well does sort of have this flare that comes out, but notice it's rolled at the end. And then it tapers back in right there, continues with this line. Looking down the side of the car, just notice once again, all the different lines and textures and shapes, frankly. It's just all nicely sculpted into the body, into the sheet metal. Look at this line and it, it stops right here and then it blends in. Wrap around windshield. Bright work at the base. This one has suicide wipers or opposing wipers. This car does have drip rails that run the length of the car. Also check out this bright piece that starts here. It goes out the back. And that's where the fin really starts. It starts right here. Notice it comes out. By the time you get to the rear, it's almost half a hand length. So these rear wheel wells, they flare out, but they're like capped off as well. And then it just blends back in. Also check out this line, how this is all sculpted. Just look at how this is channeled as it runs. There are so many gorgeous lines on this car. The rear bumpers come back to here. Just notice it has almost the same spear shape as the hood. Look how this bumper wraps around. Just look at how this angles. This paint is absolutely spectacular. It's like mirror. It looks like it has metal flake in it though. Let's say badge there. As well as the brake lights. They look like thrusters of a jet. Just look at how this is designed. Look at how the bumpers come down. License plate lights in the bumpers themselves. Beautiful Buick script there, as well as Buick badge and where the car was bought. Coming up and getting inside, um, as you can see, there's no door handles on this one, so they must be custom job just look at how this door operates like just look how close that is also notice it's all framed out it's 
feels like a nice vinyl material. The saber down here, carpet down here, armrest, door handles to get out, window crank for the vent window, and it operates like this. And just look at the shape of this vent window because of the shape of the windshield. Window crank for the big window, and it operates like this. Coming down inside, the pedal box down here, high beam switch, parking brake and or emergency brake, parking brake and or emergency brake release, brake pedal, gas pedal. Just look at this interior. Very interesting to note. Just look at how flat this section is. But then here, the foot pedal area is channeled out ever so slightly or tubbed. But back here, it has even more of a step down. So that's very interesting. Oh man, such a quality, quality shutting noise. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. And man, it's been a while since I've been in a 50s car. I absolutely love wraparound windshields. There isn't a blind spot here. I mean, just look at that. Real quick, let's take a quick gander at the pillar to glass ratio and or greenhouse from the front seat. It is so nice and airy in this car. There's very, very little pillars. Underneath the steering wheel, there's tons of space to put my hand in between my lap and the steering wheel. I wear size 36 pants. And the only reason I show that is because if you're the same size as me, you're gonna fit in this car beautifully. Also, look at the position of my knees to the dashboard, as well as the pedals are suspended. The brake pedal comes out of the firewall as opposed to from the floor, as well as the gas pedal. On to the button switches and knobs. Left air vent, right air vent, which brings fresh air from outside into the footwells in the front. Airflow, heat, defrost, rear heat, radio. Radio station select on the right, volume, bass, and tremble on the left. Ignition, wipers, headlights, as well as dome light that dim, which this is the earliest car that I ever remember seeing with this feature. In comments is speedometer. The speedometer this was called the feature? Mirror Magic, which was a brand new idea to see the gauges through a mirror, which could be tilted and cut down on those pesky glares. Odometer with tripometer, a series of lights, turn signal indicator for the left side, cold temperature, hot temperature, oil pressure, amp meter, gasoline gauge, right turn signal indicator, mirror adjustment, clock. Up above, there are sun visors, and they're pretty massive. Like, there's my hand for reference, and it's got a cutout for the rear view mirror so you can have these down and it doesn't interfere with the rear view mirror. This one has a daytime, nighttime rear view mirror. On the passenger side sun visor, notice there isn't a vanity mirror or anything like that. That was an accessory. This one has an ashtray. On to the gold box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. It's a pretty big camera. And I show this because a lot of these cars are really hard to lock. Before we get into that, just look at this dashboard and how it's designed. Look at this whole area here. And this is the glove box. The button's right here and it opens like this. So it does fit, but I don't want it to, let's see if it'll shut. So it's not going to shut and I'm afraid it's going to get jammed up in there. So it does fit, but as far as closing it, so it, maybe, but it's still a pretty big glove box. All things considered, like look at that massive camera in this glove box. So you could fit some, you could probably fit a good sized purse in there and lock it. Let's talk about the seat profile. It is rather reclined in the front, 
does kind of push out here in the center. The seat, these seats are very, very comfortable. They feel like a vinyl material, like a textured vinyl, but they're very comfortable. Like I would love to drive this car for a long period of time. That's how comfortable these seats are. Getting in the rear seat, just fold the seat forward. See how that pivots out of the way, allowing that much access into the rear. This is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar two glass ratio back here. And it gives you a whole lot better perspective on the pillar ratio. This car doesn't have a whole lot of pillars. That's what visibility looks like out the back from the back seat. Notice the parcel shelf, it's huge. I can't, I can't even touch, I can barely touch with my middle finger there like two and a half to three feet maybe pretty big there is a dome light in the center notice there are not any coat hooks on either side back here the seat profile is different than the front it is rather upright as well as the back dips down quite a bit back here but it's not uncomfortable all things considered so if you sat upright, you have about this much knee space, but you can put your feet underneath the seat and sit like this. It's, it's pretty comfortable. Transmission tunnel sticks up pretty high, making two separate compartments. So whoever was sitting in the center, this might be an issue. But then again, there's, there's a lot of space. This is a pretty wide car. Creature comforts. There is an armrest as well as an ashtray. But there isn't a lighter, just ashtrays. There's an ashtray on this side as well. And the windows do go down. But they don't go all the way down. And there's a bit of a hump there. And this car is a post car, which I didn't realize. So this is a two-door sedan. But just look at the window situation different this is what I look like sitting in the back seat I got tons tons of headroom and it's very airy and very spacious I don't feel claustrophobic it's it's actually a really good place to be so if you're thinking about buying this as a family car this would be the perfect family car because it's got tons of room coming to the under the hood section the hood release is right here It's all one motion, but it's super heavy. Oh man, there it is. Just look at that. Absolutely gorgeous engine. Alternator, which looks like it's aftermarket chrome plated. Power steering pump here on top. It's got dual horns. There's a horn here as well as a horn over here underneath the battery box 12 volt battery this one looks like it's been upgraded with a dual master cylinder with power brake booster On the positive side, drop dead gorgeous in my humble opinion, smooth performance, all of the positives of a big stately car with lots of space, both front and rear, with a car being as wide as Chris Christie, you can fit six adults, three in the front, three in the rear, very comfortably against it. This thing can be a little bit thirsty. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today, and these may or may not be in the same price point, but which one would you rather have? 1960 Oldsmobile 98 or 1960 Buick LeSabre or 1960 Chrysler New Yorker? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. Would you rather have a 1961 AMC Ambassador or 1960 Buick LeSabre or 1960 Mercury Monterey? Once again, gonna leave this here for a minute. 
If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. I'll be super impressed if anybody can get that because it's an isolated guitar track from a very popular song, but you can't hear the guitar in the song. It's covered up by all the other instruments, and it's an absolute shame because it's an awesome, very, very awesome guitar solo. Anyway, I think I said too much. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. I call it the After Party. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, pictures, stories, experiences. Plus, I share cars that are very affordable on there that are around my area that I don't have the money for, but you guys might. So there's that. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section, all the stories, information, and insight. And until next time, toodaloo!